your, your, your nation station across the country. Ramadan is a blessed month that brings us close to Allah, brings us close to ourselves, brings us close to our families, brings us close to our communities. Allow us this Ramadan to take you for a special journey that will bring you as close as ever to your reality. Join Hatim Al Abdul Salam with engineer Muhammad Farooq in. in. Come close. Come close. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. All praise be to Allah, the Master of the Day of Judgment, and peace and blessings be upon our beloved Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the ninety. Welcome to the Nation Station ninety point four ninety. What's wrong with me today? 90.4. <laughs> 90.4 FM in your program, Come Close, with me, Hatem al Salam and Engineer Muhammad Farooq. Assalamu alaikum, Muhammad. Wa alaikum as How are you today? I'm wonderful, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. So today we're continuing with the episodes, and today we have a special show, mm-hmm. which is slightly different than what we did uh, previously. Mm-hmm. But before we start, I would, I would like to remind our listeners that this is a live show, and the lines are open. You can call us on our number 2460-2058, 2460-2058. And the show is going to be repeated in the evening from 9 till 10 p.m. And also repeated tomorrow from 5 till 6 a.m. And for those who have missed the previous episodes, they can uh, tune in into our YouTube channel, which is called Guidance. Yes. And you'll find all the previous episodes. So today, inshallah, we have a special guest on the show. Joining us is uh, Mr. Abdul Aziz bin Diab al Absalam. Salam alaikum, Abdul Aziz. Salam alaikum, How are you today? How are you? Alhamdulillah. Wonderful. It's uh, an honor and a pleasure to have you on the show. And it's family business today. Two al Absalams. <laughs> Are better than one. <laughs> yeah, better than one. <laughs> Thank so, you very much for having me on the show. It's you're most privilege. welcome. You're most welcome. Uh, today, Abdul Aziz, we want to talk about an essential topic that is a concern and uh, of interest to many people. We're talking today about the keto diet. And uh, I think a lot of the, the shabab or young people are mm. very much interested today about the keto diet. And uh, we've heard this for quite some time now maybe a few months and uh, some people it's still not very clear what keto diet means and how different it is from conventional uh, diets uh, right. and i hmm. personally got to know about the keto diet from you and the brothers that they in the family and i tried it myself and i found uh, a lot of benefit uh, in it but today we want to discuss about details and sure. as you have started the keto diet uh, since uh, last year, l- last year, mm-hmm. since last year, so you you have your hands on it uh, by now, I think. More or less, yeah. yeah. But uh, for for anyone who who sees you suddenly, Abdul Aziz, you're very slim and fit, mm. and would wonder why would you go on a keto diet while bit. you're not overweight and. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't have any uh, medical problems, I would assume. Alhamdulillah, no. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So tell us, how did it start? uh, Yeah. So uh, basically, uh, last year, I've endeavored uh, or uh, decided to take up on uh, uh, participating in the Ironman race. Okay. And uh, that was about late last year, 2018. In in Oman. In Oman. I started training for the Ironman race. Uh, I've participated in one triathlon recently Mm in uh, March. Uh, but eventually the Ironman race is a global event and uh, mm-hmm. hopefully, inshallah, we'll be able to participate in many others. Inshallah. So part of the training that I had to build, first of all, I had to understand how my body would cope with endurance sports because I've never done it before. And I started following uh, pro athletes, um, triathletes who are professionals in the field of uh, you know triathlon, endurance sports, basically. Yes. And I started noticing the word keto, ketosis, ketogenic and ketones. They all fall under the same category. Uh, and what I understood from this uh, concept is that uh, it's a very efficient way to utilize uh, energy mm-hmm. using fat as a source of energy. And that's where my interest uh, peaked. Uh, reason being is because, uh, you know, when uh, you do sports, any intensive kind of sports, you need a source of energy fuel, basically, which is the commercial or the uh, the normal way, which is consuming carbohydrates and uh, sugars and so on and so forth and then you get that burst of energy but for endurance sports uh, for example if you're cycling for 120 kilometers which will take you around five to six hours maybe 
uh, you tend to burn out in terms of energy. So it wasn't an efficient way to utilize energy. And what I realized from these pro athletes is that they were all under the state of ketosis. They were all following ketogenic, most of them following ketogenic diets, at least the ones that I was uh, following in terms of their regime and programs. Mm -hmm. And what I found interesting is that uh, by utilizing fat as a source of energy, you're able to endure lengthier or longer term uh, activities. Than the traditional way of uh, yes, uh, getting uh, energy. Yeah, so I started experimenting on myself first. So I had to understand what and how this works. That's number one. And then I had to do a bit, a lot of research. A lot of research. And unfortunately, um, uh, not a lot of people uh, know about it because there are various different uh, like diets available there. But my main purpose was not to lose weight. My main purpose was to understand how to utilize endurance uh, energy source for endurance racing. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, during that process, I came to learn other benefits and health benefits associated with this ketogenic diet. Um, and uh, ever since uh, I started, my overall performance in my training and my in my uh, preparation for the Ironman race has improved drastically. Mm -hmm. I even stopped using uh, artificial uh, energizers like carbohydrates or some sh energy gels that we usually use for long distance uh, sports, uh, sweets and sugars and all that. And alhamdulillah, as of today, I could, I think probably around straight six to seven hours, I can continue with an activity or various sure. activities without the dependency on any artificial um, energizer like carbohydrates and sugars. Uh, and to me, that is what I actually wanted. But of course, in the process of learning and educating myself, I came to realize that there's so many health benefits associated with the ketogenic diet. It intrigued my attention when you said that you researched and mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you tried to find out. And um, in today's world, a lot of people get into different types of... Uh, um, diet or nutrition uh, programs without going to find out more about these programs. Yeah. They just take it from the word of mouth. Yeah. If someone says that I did this and it works, then they go immediately and imitate and, and, and sure. do. And maybe that type of nutrition uh, program is not sufficient for your body or is not uh, good enough for your body. Yeah. Because as you know, we all have different body types and yep. uh, and each body observes diff in a different way. Yep. So it's a good thing uh, to educate yourself, to understand and see mm. the benefits and don't get into something just blindly. Agreed. And uh, I think um, the last session that uh, that happened between me and you when I yep. came to your house, you explained in details and you convinced me and you gave me a lot of details so that I can, I know what I'm getting myself into. Yes. And I would urge a lot of people, you know, not only in nutrition, but anything new that you want to get into your, into it, you know, think about it, re do a, a small research. And ask. it's very easy with the internet. It's a very, lot of, very uh, resources easy. Resources are available. Very easy, very resources. convenient. Yeah. yeah. Speaking about credible resources, if I may. Um, so uh, I, I question, uh, by nature, I do question a lot of things. It's, I don't uh, accept information from the first value. So... Eventually, I ended up with uh, the first reference, which I strongly recommend. His name is Dr. Stephen Finney. Mm -hmm. He's um, a medical doctor, mm -hmm. an internal medicine doctor, and he's been practicing for over 40 years. Um, he has uh, been in ketosis for the last 30 years. Not and sure in addition, about. what made me follow him is that he's an endurance cyclist. Mm -hmm. So he does ultra-long cycling uh, sessions over 150 to 200 kilometers a session Actually. and that's that intrigued me even more and i started following his videos he's available on youtube uh his company is called his vitra uh and he refers to a lot of research he has conducted himself uh and of course part of his uh, uh consultancy or the medical services that he offer is to help people with mainly diabetes and other medical conditions mm -hmm. uh, but just the fact that he is also an endurance cyclist and he's also in ketosis and he's able to understand that is a good reference to go to first and then there was some communication uh, by email back and forth just to help with my questions as well and all that and ever since then I started having a better understanding of what needs to be done. You know Mohammed, what is intriguing is mm -hmm. that uh, uh, as uh, Abdul Aziz mentioned that uh, uh, this doctor has been practicing uh, keto for more than 30 years or 40 years. Mm -hmm. But apparently in the Middle East, I, d I would say that not e not even more than one year yeah. that people came to realize that there's something called keto. Yeah. 
So what what went wrong or why didn't we get to know about this uh, previously? See, uh, first of all, the the name or the commercializing of this name, keto diet, is fairly new. Mm. When I say fairly new, meaning it's been there for the last four or five years, commercializing of it. And of course, when I say commercializing, you see people writing books about it and recipes and online and stuff like that. Uh, as for, for people who've been following it, it's uh, being followed, but the reference is not per se as keto. I'll give you one interesting example. <clears throat> every newborn, yeah, every new child, every newborn is born in a state of ketosis. Mm-hmm. Uh, mashallah. And I'll explain to you how. Okay. Um, because, see, the whole concept of keto, first, the keto comes from the word ketogenic, which is a part of, uh, it's a hormone that's being released in your body, which is ketones. And uh, what ketone does is that it utilizes fat as a source of energy. So in order for you to be able to utilize fat efficiently, uh, your body has to release these hormones called ketones. Uh, as to uh, insulin, which is the hormone that manages the carbs and sugar that we traditionally have. Uh, if you go a couple of hundred years ago, back, uh, and further back than that as well, you'd come to realize that the way that people ate, especially during, since the, when they refer to the man cave era, mm. you know, it was mainly purely just a source of fat, protein, and a bit of carbs. Carbs can be found in everything, you know, vegetables and all that, but we're talking about very low carbohydrates. Mm-hmm. But if you look today at how we eat, and this was post uh, World War II where industrialization and globalization took place, um, um, rice, wheat, sugar has spread all over the, uh, the continent and industrializing that and commercializing it was very easy. And as a result, uh, if you go to the supermarkets, you find about over 60% of foods, whether it's in boxes or proce- processed foods, mm-hmm. apart from natural, uh, like vegetables and all that, you'd find that they have a percentage of sugar or wheat or some sort of uh, artificial uh, um, preservant, preservant yeah, that is associ- associated with uh, carbohydrates. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> naturally, the tendency for mankind is to adapt. And uh, unfortunately, we adapted. And if you look today at how we've adapted and our food habits, the, the way it's changed, it's changed and it's, it's now becoming our worst enemy. If you look at the top three reasons for causes of, let's say, death, for example, uh, a lot of them are associated with dietary diseases which uh, you refer to as diabetes, uh, hypertension, blood pressure. blood pressure, and so on and so forth. Heart disease. Yeah, yeah. So la- I think lack of ed- education is one issue that uh, this not being discussed uh, in, a, in a wide, uh, in, a, in a mainstream uh, uh, environment. Um, two, habits. Uh, and of course, another thing which is very critical to understand is cravings. Because uh, carbohydrates release sugar, sugar releases endorphins, and you crave it. You know, if you mm. stop rice or bread for plus the billboards from, on the road, plus the billboards on the road, <laughs> you know, so and that, the ads. Uh, so you tend to to have a blind eye. But I think the West, uh, when this blew up initially in the West, of course, celebrities started uh, following this from a health perspective and also for losing weight and all that. Uh, the concept was known. It's just that commercializing of it was relatively new. And since today everybody's got access to social media, Instagram, so on and so forth, you start following. This is like how I found out. I started researching on tra- training programs for the pro athletes. And as a result, I stumbled into uh, ketogenic, Keto. nu- mm. nutritional ketogenic uh, programs, which is a lifestyle. So the bottom line is, Hatim, unless and until the big food companies and pharma companies don't get into this eh? yeah and they start uh, commercializing it and making it popular True. it's not going to gain that much traction yeah yeah because uh, as mohammed said uh, these uh, industries they are minting money yeah. out of these processed food so it's and about yeah. profits before people you yeah know. and it's basically th- what they want is to sell yeah. they don't care about uh, because uh, as you can notice now they uh, yeah. Ob- the level of obesity, uh, especially in the Middle East, hmm. because of the lifestyle, is it has increased. Yep. Even the chronic diseases have increased as well. Yeah. And sometimes um, you you would wonder what is uh, what is the plan or what is the way forward to reduce or to cut down or to eliminate the problems that we have, the medical problems that we have. Hmm. The solution, you know, is not always building more hospitals. True. Or training more doctors. 
True. You know, prevention is better than cure. Cure, exactly. And 100%. this type of prevention, it's easy and it can be done and you can heal yourself. True. And we're going to talk more about that, uh, inshallah, shortly. Sure. But, um, Abdul Aziz, you know, a lot of people who are going through a diet, they lose the weight and then they gain triple the weight they, they lost. Yep. Why does that happen? And uh, does it happen also in keto diet? Yeah, see, so with any sort of diet, regardless whether it's keto, Atkins, paleo, and uh, it comes down to discipline. You know, I mean, all these diets have been created for a purpose, and I believe that it was created for a purpose, and that purpose is good to have a good outcome, positive outcome, whether it's in terms of losing weight or living a healthier lifestyle and so on. If you have short term goals, just to hit that number on a scale, on a weighing scale, then that's not sustainable. Because once you do and you get to a comfort zone and then you say, okay, fine, now I can sort of bounce back, but I'll manage by walking an extra two kilometers. But and then you're still filling your body with the wrong things again. So it's a matter of consistency. See, uh, when you decide to move into or decide to, to pick a diet to follow, not necessarily keto, for example, because I'm sure there are a lot of people following different types of diet. The key is consistency. And another thing is that one glove doesn't fit all. So you have to understand how it affects and how it uh, promotes the benefits for your specific uh, body. And you have different body types, different way of living, and mainly lifestyle has to do a lot of things. So if you look, for example, when I searched uh, for certifications on ketosis, or on keto, the diet, I've noticed majority of them refer to keto as a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. the, not, it's not, not, it's not, not a nutritional... That? So it's not a nutritional based Intake, certification, yeah. right? And and uh, there was only one, the American Association of um, Nutrition, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they're the only ones who went uh, through a formal uh, keto diet uh, nutrition program. But it has to be done by uh, nutrition professionals. Uh, but otherwise, everything else I've, I've found online was mainly on keto, referring to keto as a lifestyle. And that's the key word is that if you're willing to turn your lifestyle around in terms of how you eat and what you eat, then consistency in maintaining maintaining that goal is an easy thing. But if you're short short you're short sighted to a specific goal where you want to get into a you know, you go a, down to ten kgs, hit and a all specific that, number, yes, and then it becomes difficult because you have temptation around you. You've got uh, social uh, gatherings, obligations and so many things, so many temptations that would especially in Ramadan. You know, so one of the most difficult times, actually, to yeah, well, it is definitely. Uh, but uh, the key here is discipline and being consistent. Uh, for example, uh, I'm not sure if you're aware, but a very, f very uh, similar diet, which I'm sure if I tell you the name, you'd all recognize. It's called Atkins diet. The, yeah, very popular. But did you know that they're very similar between keto and Atkins? The only difference is that Atkins diet starts off as a keto diet, and then you gradually uh, increase your carb intake. Know, and get to a point where you're comfortable with the carb intake. The idea is just from going from a low carb to a mid carb thing. And there was no restrictions on protein intake when you look at your uh, formulation of your meal. Mm. So that's the Atkins diet. The keto is a bit more straightforward and structured. Um, so in reality, in reality, when I'm coming back to the point of newborns, all newborns uh, are starting off their life on an Atkins diet. Because in mm -hmm. reality, you're starting off in a keto, and then as you grow, you start consuming different types of foods, and then you get into the yeah. But yeah. How, how does how is the baby uh, on keto diet while the mother eats all sorts of junk? Yeah, but what does the baby eat? No, I don't right? know, man. I milk. don't. I don't remember. So newborns are consuming milk, basically, right? So mm -hmm. and milk is high okay. High you, you mean you mean when they are not in the womb? No, no, no. When, when they are. When, 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 they're, when, born. They're, when they're born. When they're born. Yeah, yeah, born. Yeah, okay. Okay. So it's it's only milk. Basically, that's the only thing you give a newborn for, but the last first six months fat. at least, yeah, which is fat. And uh, the whole keto ketogenic uh, concept is that uh, your main fuel or your main source of of, of your meal Energy. would be, let's say, for example, if I'm going to be uh, uh, segmenting it, so today seventy percent of it is fat, and I'll come down to exactly what type of fat are we talking about, and then maybe twenty to twenty five percent of it is protein, and the remaining five percent is carbs. Mm -hmm. which can also mean you could consume vegetables, you can consume, but as long as you are not exceeding that intake that you're supposed to have every day. 
So it varies from person to person. But based on the researches that I've seen and all that, it's ideal if you're a relatively moderate, moderately active person. So you don't do sports, let's say, every day. You just walk every now and then. So between 25 to 35 grams of carbohydrates a day. That's ideal. So that means that you're not going to allow your body to uh, produce en enough insulin to spike your blood sugar levels. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're very active, you can go up to about 80 so, so what would the what would be the minimum that someone has to do to qualify for this keto lifestyle? See, um, first of all, um, uh, let's use Ramadan, for example. Okay. And this is something I've experimented as well. Um, we all go through a ketogenic cycle during Ramadan. It's because uh, we deprive our bodies from food once uh, for more than 12 to between 14 to 16 hours a day, for mm -hmm. example. And if you notice the first week, at least the first four or five days, you tend to be weak. Yes. It's because your body, your body is, is deprived from carbs and sugar. You don't have enough for it to be burning because, you know, you, you burn calories even while you're resting. Right. So what happens is that by the second week, you start feeling a bit better mm -hmm. with the fasting. You can cope with the fasting. Maybe the thirst would be a bit of an issue, but in terms of energy levels and all that, it's fine. And as you go to the third week and fourth week, and then everything becomes normal. But during the process, I'm sure a lot of you would uh, agree that you're much lighter. You're... Uh, thinking clearer you know and you don't necessarily have to indulge in food by the second and third and fourth week your your uh, uh, appetite and 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 cravings have dropped down so we all get to try that uh, the state of ketosis uh, without, during Ramadan without, without, without knowing, knowing about it without knowing, exactly knowing yeah. About it, yeah. yeah so what happens during this time is that your body starts producing ketones which is a hormone that utilizes fat as a source of fuel uh, which is in your body and sometimes whatever you eat also as well uh, of course but this can also be the cycle can be broken subject to what you eat and how you break your fast if you're breaking your fast with uh, oily foods and sugars and sweets and all that that can still bounce back people gain weight mm -hmm. yeah because their body is in a recovery stage right now mm. and that recovery means that it wants to utilize fat and not carbs so if you eat well uh, clean and, and healthy uh, food where you moderately look at your carb intake which is low and your fat intake good fat uh, high and your protein is also at the moderate level uh, you will naturally lose weight it's because your body now wants to utilize a source of energy and the only excess source of energy that you have in your body right now is fat if you consume carbohydrates you're averaging between two to three thousand sometimes four thousand calories of carbs in your body and that can be burnt within two, three hours. But any, any, any even time, human body has between 20 to 30,000 calories of fat across everywhere in your body. So, and it burns a bit slower than carbs. That's why it's very good for endurance sports. And that's why it's very difficult to run out. Even the leanest bodybuilders have a percentage of fat. You know, the ones that go compete in bodybuilding. There's always events. fat in your body. Always, mm. always. And that's very difficult to uh, get, get burned, right? So during Ramadan, I think it's the best example to, t to show people that uh, we do all go through a state of ketosis, but that's a light ketosis. Um, when do you become uh, at an optimal stage of ketosis? Is uh, There's a, um, a measure which um, is called the um, um, millimoles, M-M-O-L, mm -hmm. which refers to the level of ketones in your bloodstream. That's so it's like the device they use for measuring glucose. diabetics. Yeah, for glucose, glucose measurement. Of course, you have other different means and ways to measure your uh, ketones. Uh, but uh, the most accurate one is the blood. I think. It's the same device that you use for measuring blood sugar levels. But you use the ketones strips. And uh, anything between 0 0.5 to 1.5 is light ketosis. So if you generally te test majority of the people fasting by the second or third week you'd see them between ranging between 0 0.5 to 1 maybe 1 1.2 you know that's a very light ketosis uh, the ideal optimal uh, level is 1.5 to 3 mmols uh, and that means what that, that means that your body is purely running on fat efficiently as a source of energy mm. uh, and any consumption of carbs uh, or sugar would knock you out of ketosis so it'll have a mix so think of our body as an engine a hybrid engine okay you're you're transitioning from a fuel-based engine to a hybrid engine where you have a fuel and battery right? batteries mm -hmm. and your goal is to become a tesla which is a fuel uh, you know like batteries zero, you you run on battery, battery driven, yeah. yeah so okay. it's much more efficient powerful and, and eco-friendly eco-friendly of yes. course yeah yeah okay so uh, what if uh, someone starts this journey with you know all the uh, high emotions 
but then they kind of uh, lapse out of it. Uh, what hope is there? Like, should they get back into the diet or, you know, just give up? See, uh, the idea is, what are your goals? I'll mm-hmm. give you a small example. I've been having a discussion with a very good friend of mine who is a, uh, a professional weightlifter. Um, for him, based on his nature of the sports that he's doing, uh, keto or being in a ketosis state or uh, being in a ketogenic uh, diet isn't really ideal for him because his sport requires big bursts of energy. You know, weightlifting is a f- less than a minute kind of activity, yes. especially if you're competing and all that. So, but then you require that big burst of energy. And uh, operating your, your body, uh, depending on uh, f- fat as a source of uh, fuel, won't give you that burst of energy. Mm-hmm. If you're because it takes time to, to, it's an, to it's, it's, yeah. So for somebody like myself who does endurance sports, it's ideal because the whole game is about pacing yourself for three, four, five hours. And as a result, you want to maintain that pace. But for somebody who's doing uh, sprints or anything that has requires a burst of energy, the ideal thing would just to be on carbs and, mm-hmm. you know, the normal traditional group. And he does a lot of carb loading, which means he consumes large quantities of carbohydrates like a few hours four or five hours before the actual training that he does mm. and it's it works well with him so <clears throat> it depends on the nature but the key here is uh, a lot of people get into ketosis that i know of for weight loss okay um we have to first define and be very clear about what is weight loss are you referring to a certain number on a scale or are you f- referring to burning fat which is inches around your waist. And, yes. And and we were talking about that with Abdul Aziz before the show, saying that uh, who is a healthy person? Is is everyone who is slim a healthy person? Mm-hmm. Not necessarily. Or there is a, a definition for a, hand, a healthy person? Yeah. So let me give you a small example. Um, I, I combine my training with a lot of um, uh, weightlifting, my weight and the, the gym. Yes. And as a result, I've burned significant amount of fat in the last uh, two and a half months uh, but in reality I just dropped one and a half kilos so Des- what, despite, uh, despite burning all, yeah, the all the calories so what happened was I've turned a lot of my fat into muscle mm. and as a result the scale doesn't reflect but then in reality mm. somebody looks at me is like you lost a lot of weight Correct. I look like I've lost a lot yes I've slimmed down and all that I became much more leaner but uh, in terms of weight yeah fat turned into muscle okay. so we have to be very clear the definition if you are aiming to burn fat, obviously, eventually tone down. And of course, obviously, that's associated with weight loss. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you will have to lose 10 kgs because you can lose 10 kgs in different ways. Mm-hmm. Yes. But then you have to do it in a healthy way. Okay. And it has to be in a sustainable way as well. All right. Now, okay. come. let's come to the interesting part. Can you share some sample uh, keto diets with us? Keto, okay. So we So the macros of your meal generally consists of high fat. Okay. which is, like I said, 70% of your uh, your uh, food. And I'll come down to exactly what do I mean what, by fat. What do you mean by fat? No. And then you have your 20 to 25%, which is protein. Um, and then your remaining 5%, 5, 10%, which is your carbohydrates. Uh, so that's the composition of what a meal looks like. So I'll give you a small example. My breakfast consists of um, omelette, three eggs. Three mm-hmm. eggs. Um, half uh, avocado. Okay, b- before you get yeah, to the yeah, avocado, yeah. Yeah. how do you cook the omelette with the traditional oil? Or? I use, okay, so good fats, when we talk about good fats, okay, I'll come back to the point number one. Good fats uh, refer to uh, uh, fats that are more or less natural. Mm-hmm. Um, when I say natural, meaning it wasn't, it didn't go through a, lo- a process to extract that oil or fat. Mm. For example, corn oil and sunflower, sunflower oil, oil, these had to go through a process uh, of heat and then until you get to extract that actual oil and that's the one mainly used in many homes yes and uh, fat refers to two components which is hdl high density lip protein and and ldl LDL, which is low density protein so the l you want to stay away from ldls right and you want to focus more on fats that contain hdl so you yeah so you're talking about um um, avocado is an example 100 percent butter ghee it's a good example as well. Um, coconut oil, olive oils, oils that are cold pressed, like almond and olive. N- and now, olive. hearing this, uh, Abdul Aziz, you know, we always had this understanding, and I don't know why, yes. yeah. uh, that, you know, you shouldn't have these fat because they'll give you cholesterol, they yeah. will affect your heart, yes. and they're bad, especially like ghee. Yes. 
ghee yeah. and butter and, and these things yeah. they were like no no see yeah so we were we deceived or it's yeah. just lack of uh, knowledge yeah i think okay so there was a misconception here because fat is generalized as one thing mm -hmm. which is cholesterol and cholesterol is always referred to and um, you've never heard somebody talk about cholesterol in a positive way it was always associated with heart problems and has high cholesterol and so on and so forth but yes. then we need to understand the, the composition of cholesterol like i said it's composition comprising of hdls and ldls mm -hmm. so we want to stay away from ldls These are the bad oils. Which bad is fats. the corn, corn, corn oil and yeah. uh, sunflower oil. There is an extensive list of exactly, I mean, you can find it online. It's a list of different types of uh, oils which you want to stay away from. Uh, and you have a list of the HDL fats and oils. So butter, for example, I never used to have butter at all. At all. Not just for health purposes, I just never liked it. Uh, today, over the last, I don't know how long, maybe uh, five months, I have my morning coffee. I blend it with uh, a teaspoon of butter. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. But how it has do, to be. How it, does that taste? Yeah, well, you should try it. <laughs> we'll good. find out after seven o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> so I put a bit of um, uh, butter and a bit of cinnamon, and black coffee, and, and it's, it's, it's perfect. So what happens is uh, you have, today, if you go to the supermarket, you'd find butters that are mixed with canola oil or with uh, margarine. Mm -hmm. Those are not pure butter. So then those contain LDLs. But 100% Your butter is good for you because it contains HDLs, and HDLs is known to be lubricant for your intestine. Uh, okay, no, uh, sorry, just to uh, cut you off there for a second. When you add butter to the coffee, hmm. is that purely just for taste, or some, or is it An as, a, of as a replacement for something else? Yeah. So I use now. Now it's it's. Uh, I I have. To, uh, I got so used to the taste, I, I can't have it without the butter. Okay. <laughs> But in reality, uh, it's called the bulletproof coffee, mm -hmm. uh, and what I do is I take it in the morning. And that gives me an energy throughout the whole day. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, so, it's so not it's, stored. It's not it's, fat it, that it's stored. It's actually... So once it's you ca ca coffee, butter, and... Uh, I use cinnamon, cinnamon sometimes, yeah. yeah. Cinnamon. Yeah. If, you're, if you like your coffee sweet, you can use a sweetener, artificial sweetener, like uh, stevia, which is a bit... Uh, stevia, yeah. yeah. It doesn't spike your insulin, and it's, it's uh, healthy as well. It's a plant. Uh, you can do that, and it comes, your coffee becomes a bit sweeter. Okay, so you were saying butter because it's not stored... You said it gives you energy all day. Yeah. Like so what it decomposes slowly, slowly over time. So once you're on a state in a state of ketosis, mm -hmm. where your body is 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 flowing with ketones, uh, you need fat as source of energy, right? Mm -hmm. So either you consume the fat in your body, which I, you can tell I, I don't I'm not uh, overweight, alhamdulillah. Uh, so I re I consume fat, uh, not good good fats uh, in my meals. And I make sure that I, I try to keep that 70-60% uh, composite of fat in my meals. Okay, so okay. breakfast is omelette plus uh, the uh, bulletproof coffee. Oh, and, and half avoc avocado. Half avocado. You know, uh, half avocado and, and maybe... you so eat it raw, the avocado. Yes. Just you, put don't, a little bit you don't of, add anything to it? It's good to add, like for example, when you're on a keto diet, um, a lot of, there was a lot of, again, research that I read about it, and uh, your body that tend to deplete from uh, salt. Uh, so I use a lot of mineral salt, uh, like Himalayan salt or yellow pink salt and all that. So I just add uh, salt as for a flavoring uh, every, uh, on every meal. Uh, okay. So And you can have uh, protein with it, with slices of chicken or eggs already protein, but you can have vegetables with it and all that. But point is, uh, I used to have my omelette always with bread. <laughs> and what happens is when, when you look at our traditional uh, diet, which consists of carbs. R rice and bread and pasta. So if you, let's say you take a normal person who has three meals a day mm -hmm. and if you measure his insulin levels and spikes throughout the whole day, you will notice that there are like various spikes of insulin uh, shooting over the normal, normal. Uh, range. Uh, that would be like morning time. And yes. So th that is the main issue is that you keep spiking your insulin levels. And at one point of time with age and slowing of metabolism, uh, you end up And of course, lack of activity, lack of exercising, and so on and so forth, you end up being uh, insulin resistant. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of like a pre diabetes stage so, so, uh, for somebody who's consuming carbohydrates, like what we usually uh, traditionally have. Yeah. Uh, of course, it varies from one person to the other. You have, of course, genetics has to do a lot to play with it, but mm -hmm. uh, you're basically promoting you know, yourself into getting. Uh, Now, uh, Abdul Aziz, I wanted to ask you about the alternative because, hmm. uh, like, bread is one of the main elements of a breakfast. Yeah. And a lot of people, you know, depend on bread yes, for breakfast. One of the main elements of yeah. life. And yes. if you tell people, you know, yes. don't eat uh, bread, then uh, you, you've just killed them. See. So is there an alternative? See, first we have to uh, understand something. 
your daily intake of carbs, assuming your activity level is on an average, so you walk, let's say, every day, half an hour. You're burning some sort of calories uh, with exercise, light exercise. Um, your daily intake of carbohydrates should not exceed 35 to, let's say, between 35 to 40, the 50 percent, the 50 grams. It differs from person to person, right? So that means whatever you consume should be on a uh, small, scale. very low carbohydrate level. So let's assume a slice of bread, an average brown bread, for example. This is just a reference I got from the internet. But a slice of brown bread, wheat, uh, wholemeal bread, it's between 12 to 15 grams of carbs. Okay. Um, ideally, if you have it in the morning, and that's your mainly, let's say you, you consume once a day, you eat once a day, you're on an intermittent fasting or you fast, you can afford to indulge on these things on a very small scale. Uh, but of course, if you consume, if you exceed that 35 or 50 grams, then you're uh, allowing your body to release insulin to manage the blood sugar levels and so on and so forth. So prohibiting food is not the idea. It's limiting the intake intake of that. So, for example, um, I make my own, uh, well, I try, I try to make my own bread. I've experimented already four times. I ate them all four, but it wasn't that great, but it was a you know, work in progress, and I'm still <laughs> going to work on it. But I make my bread using uh, almond flour. Okay. And I mix it sometimes with coconut flour. And it tastes... I mean, it you tastes you like bake bread. it in you the traditional way? Yeah, yeah, same. All the ingredients are the same. The only thing is you replace it instead of using normal flour, you use almond flour and coconut flour. Okay. So I, I'm keep, I still am experimenting. Uh, of course, uh, I'm not a baker by profession, but uh, <laughs> anything that would work is okay with me. So... Uh, and I enjoy doing this. So the first days that I've started, the first weeks that I've started with kilos, I've started looking at alternatives because that's the first question. Yes, what do I substitute this with that? Mm -hmm. So with rice, for example, again, I'm not big on rice. Uh, uh, so you, a, you're not part of the Mendy Club? No, not part of the Mendy Club. <laughs> but, but again, I do have rice like twice or three times a week on an usual, uh, usual and, um, and I have brown rice mainly. But even this, I stopped it. So, so I substituted I've, I've this. What happens when you go to the in-laws? It's a big problem. <laughs> <laughs> we, can't, we compromise. We look at ways to compromise. But uh, what I found, a lot of recipes online on alternatives. For example, with rice, now I substitute my rice uh, requirements or cravings with uh, cauliflower, uh, uh, sautéed cauliflower uh, rice. So how do you prepare So you that? just uh, take a cauliflower, you put it in a food processor, not mm -hmm. blender, food processor. Okay. Blend it with a little bit of onion and then just sauté it or even put it in the oven for a while, let it cook, let it sweat. And then uh, use that as a form of rice. And it works perfectly. Literally, like two days ago, I had uh, my iftar was with curry, chicken curry, you know, with uh, cauliflower rice. And it was more than satisfying. Mm -hmm. I, I was a yeah. bit creative. It, I threw in a, bit of, a, bit, a few it, it of broccoli like, as well. It okay. sounds like a cooking pro program, man. Eh? <laughs> See, I think also what helps me is that uh, uh, my earlier uh, time when I, uh, 16, 17 years ago, I started my career as a chef. Mm-hmm. And that helped a lot to build my foundation in the kitchen. So I don't find it difficult to, to go and explore things and try things by myself. But I understand that there's a challenge on getting the right food and getting the right person to do that food. For and you. that's, a bit and of that's the thing, yeah. Min Abdelaziz, uh, that a lot of people want to start a healthy lifestyle in this. But when it comes to preparing the meals, then it becomes a challenge. Yeah, there's especially, no availability. Yeah, especially yeah. for the people who are working for long hours. Yeah. They feel like, you know, if I'm going to, to work from six till five, then I have to prepare like two or three meals yeah. and take it with me to work. It's it's a hassle. So it becomes uh, challenging. And I even uh, shopping for the groceries, uh, like like you mentioned, the uh, almond flour mm. is not like available in all yes. uh, stores. Okay. You you really need to yeah. to work hard to find it. True. Uh, that's one of the difficulties that I faced myself. Uh, some I even or had to order a few things online. Just because okay. I couldn't find it, just to see if it's really worth it and all that. But um, but you can find alternatives. It's all about what you're craving for. If you're craving for a burger, a few weeks ago I wanted to have a burger for iftar and I didn't have time to make a bread for it or make a bun for it. And I just wrapped it with uh, lettuce and it was one of the most best burgers I've ever had. 
Really? <laughs> the highlight was the meat, right? Well, With cheese and all that. At, like, uh, at iftar time, everything is the best <laughs> in the world. <laughs> <laughs> One quick question, Abdul. Sure. Uh, you mentioned your breakfast here. I'm, mm. I'm sure our listeners will benefit from this. Yeah. Uh, and you mentioned uh, the rice, which could have been lunch or, or dinner for that matter. Yeah. Yeah. Are you still sticking to the regime of three meals a day? And what about the uh, stop Snacks. gets yeah, arrangements where you... Yeah. You have this craving for snacks. Are you doing that or you're not? And if not, how you're handling that? Okay, fair enough. Now, you have, again, you can get a lot of uh, information online on what type of snacks that are very low in carbohydrates. For example, nuts, seeds are low in carbohydrates mm -hmm. and they're friendly. Uh, surprisingly, I found uh, most of the supermarkets have this um, chocolate and sweets which is done by, I think it's called the Big Shop, something, it's a brand. Um, and they do keto-friendly uh, sweets. Really? Yes, okay. yes, yes, and you can find them on most of the supermarkets. First Finally, was, hope. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I've, I have a couple of boxes of them at home, hanging around in the office and whenever you need it. And yeah, for example, peanut butter is, is, a, is a great source of uh, fat and energy. So one of them is a peanut butter wrapped in around uh, dark chocolate with a little bit of stevia on it. That's the sweetener. And it works well. It's it's literally it, mm -hmm. it kills the craving of going for you know traditional chocolates. And so all that. you can have the the normal peanut butter or yeah, the normal peanut butter is fine. Yeah. So the only thing, see, you've got different brands offering different type of composites within their ingredients. Yeah. So you try to avoid anything that has high sugar content. Mm -hmm. So if you look at a serving of anything, for example, let's say you'd find two different brands of but peanut butter, and one uh, compared to the other has at least five grams more of sugar. Ideally, you'd want to stay away from this. I mean, you'd, do, you'd have to do a bit of homework as you start. Okay. And like, corn syrup also, I guess? Anything that... Corn syrup is pure fructose. Yeah. So what happens is, again, um, you don't want to stop totally uh, the good stuff, like fruits, for example. Mm -hmm. Fruits are nutritious, and they've got vitamins and so on and so forth. But if your goal is to get into a state of ketosis where you allow your body to release ketones to use that, uh, to, to utilize fat as a source of energy, mm -hmm. then you have to cut off these things until you get to that level and state. And then that, when that becomes the norm, that becomes your lifestyle, then you can go to exceptions. You can have two or one you know cheat day a week or so, because you can get that, back to ketosis again that was one of my questions but yeah, i'm glad yeah. you answered that yeah, yeah. so uh, for example i get to because again my my training regime is is intense and uh, i i like to explore things in the kitchen and all that so i always don't limit myself to just now that i know how it works i get to play around a bit so i can afford to have a sweet or fruits or ice cream and all that because i know in a couple of hours i just go burn it all off within my training program so okay uh, but on on ideally, if your goal is to live a healthier lifestyle or get into this keto lifestyle, and if you uh, your goal is to, for example, lose weight or burn fat, then you have to allow your body to produce ketones. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple. That doesn't mean whatever you're stopping to eat is bad. No. Again, I, I will argue with anybody. Fruits are very good for you, mm -hmm. but they contain fructose, and 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 that you know spikes your uh, insulin levels and it doesn't allow ketones to be produced you have insulin being produced instead okay. so to manage that sugar see, level see, sometimes you hear people say that eat fruits which are not ripe you know they're, they're still a bit e raw yes yes that's so, one good, yes okay so you have fruits that are keto friendly as well which are very low on, on, the, on the on the sugar level which is like things like strawberry okay. blueberry blackberries you know grapefruit I have a lot of grapefruit it's not sweet it's actually bitter it has a, a slight amount of uh, fructose in it, but it's very low. So yeah, so you have things that you can eat and it's relatively safe. But in in all in all, it comes down to moderation. Correct. What when about uh, animal fat? So uh, previously you were told natural. that uh, you know when you eat the chicken you don't eat, eat the skin, yeah. or when you eat uh, barbecue meat and then mm. you don't eat the fat. Yeah, throw mm. it so out. So can yeah. you can you eat the so so those, I, those I when I okay put it to this so after finding out what I found out um, I make sure that my meat has fat in it. Has fat in yeah. it. Because at this point uh, my body is utilizing fat efficiently. It actually burns fat. As a source of energy so and fat from animal fat is natural it's it's not processed and all that so it's relatively uh, okay can can you suggest some vegetables like you've mentioned few fruits mm. 
uh, so in you know somebody who's going through the the keto experience yep. what kind of vegetables he or she should introduce in their lives yep. so what i could advise or what i could tell you is what are the vegetables that you should avoid okay it's better yeah that's uh, easier so starchy vet- vegetables like uh, potato sweet potato uh, these are the main main two Mahogo. Uh, yeah cassava cassava yeah, as well yeah. because they're very starchy and high in car- carbohydrates so yeah. uh, 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 a medium sized potato would give you about over 23 grams of carbs carbohydrates mm. uh, and if you uh, uh, it doesn't matter how you cook it it's just uh, it's starch you know? uh-huh. uh, so basically anything that's green is good anything that's green is good okay. uh, generally um, zucchini is a very popular uh, actually zucchini uh, which is called it has a different name I forgot the name of the zucchini but uh, it looks like a um, what do you call it green uh, or yellow yeah you got two different colors and mm-hmm. it looks very much like a cucumber so what i'm why am i saying this is interesting is because um, they even use it as a pasta alternative oh wow yeah so if you look at the keto if you go to uh, online or pinterest and all that and you look at the uh, keto friendly pastas you'd see most of them are done with zucchini where they actually uh, have a device and it becomes like uh, like, uh, pasta. like pasta and all that and it, it it's an alternative mm-hmm. and that's a, it's a pretty good uh, option so i've it's tried a pretty that good well. deception you know like yeah. you have these uh, veggie burgers yeah. and it takes yeah. you a while to figure out hey wait a minute there's no meat in it but it still tastes like <laughs> meat exactly <you> know? <laughs> yeah. uh, speaking about carbs again something else you need to remember is that the um carbs associated with sugar of course releases endorphins so you have that feel good hormone every time you consume carbs and that's why it's addictive Okay. So once you have it out of your system, you don't have that craving anymore. Just bearing in mind and then becomes easier to manage your cravings because what are we doing? We're just satisfying our need. Okay. For, you know. So in other words, when we get upset or depressed, we immediately try to grab a chocolate bar. Yes. But if we remove it from our system, we would not need exactly. it. We would not uh, crave that. That's what you're saying. Exactly. So yes. once we get over this hurdle once, the yes. journey becomes a bit easier. easier. Exactly. Very oh, right. Wonderful. Very, very right. And uh, Abdulaziz, I wanted to ask you, what's the relationship between uh, keto and uh, sleeping and exercise? Hmm. So would someone need to go for regular exercise for the keto diet to work? See, so when you exercise, you burn calories, mm-hmm. right? And you you force your body to utilize as energy source so if uh, being active generally uh, because exercise varies from one person to the other so just being active certain level of activity uh, walking jogging swimming whatever it is if you're on a keto diet you're actually speeding up that process of you producing ketones because mm-hmm. and then you're burning up whatever you have and you need to replace it with something so that's what that's what comes in and kicks in faster uh, but that doesn't mean uh, you again it's just a, a faster way and it's a healthier way of of managing uh, ketosis it's that you always have another out, out outlet to burn that excessive energy that you have what about sleeping habits it's very important to be uh, me personally um, i believe in in uh, sleeping on a sleeping early and waking up early mm-hmm. and i sleep an average between 6 to 7 hours max sometimes 8 if it's on the weekend uh, but uh, the idea is that once you uh, get into a specific sleeping pattern then you discipline you following it uh, religiously uh, you get to rest right. you get to get into that deep sleep and you get to uh, uh, something called REM which yeah, is uh, rapid get, eye uh, movement yes yeah. exactly so you got to that level and you in deep sleep now you promote a uh, release of uh, good hormones in your body your uh, blood levels get uh, uh, your sugar gets uh, balan- balanced um you're well rested you have mm-hmm. enough energy for the next day. so it does play a role but it doesn't necessarily have a direct impact on whether you're burning fat or losing weight at that okay. point okay yeah. one more question sure. uh, what about uh, fasting outside of ramadan like yeah. uh, it's highly recommended Uh, religiously to fast at least two days uh, yes. a week like Monday and Thursday yeah and now uh, research has been done on this and there's one lady who's selling books about it and you know mm-hmm. she's she's really big about what she calls uh, fasting for two days and feasting for five days okay so you're also engaged in in a similar routine uh, yes so it's called intermittent fasting mm-hmm. it's uh, not necessarily religious so, and that's what I do out of Ramadan mm-hmm. which I pick maybe 3 or 4 days in a week I just consume just water and maybe a coffee but I don't eat 
um, and it's the same duration of you know during fasting Ramadan. So what happens is that fasting in general is a good thing and associated with keto that makes it even better. Okay. You know? So you get to limit the food intake, the calorie intake that you have, and also I like the fact that uh, when I'm fasting, whether it's in Ramadan or uh, not Ramadan, my I'm clear-minded. I, I, I focus much easier. I, I don't feel I feel light throughout the whole day. Yes. Uh, the only element for me is that um, on my training program, uh, so I, I try to split as much as I can closer to the meals that I have during my intermittent fasting. So I'll have a workout session before the meal or literally after the meal as well. Okay. So intermittent fasting is a very good thing associated with ketogenic uh, diet. Uh, and it's highly recommended. I mean, like you said, people write a lot about it in Islam also. The Prophet said that's a good thing mm, to do it twice awesome. a week and so on yes. and so forth. Yeah. Exactly. And I think... Uh, if you look at the difference between um, the traditional diets and the keto diet, I, I have seen a few videos uh, of documentaries where they say the the healing power of the keto diet, yeah. and that is not found in other diets. Maybe. Sure. Um, so, what's the association with uh, with healing? I mean, how does your body heal when it comes to the keto diet? So, number one um, is that you always maintain a, a low level of blood sugar in your system. And uh, you always uh, produce less insulin that's needed in your body. So that itself has positive impacts on your health and organs. You know, uh, Ketones doesn't have the same effects as, an, as insulin. Um, and of course, you're forced to eat clean. So you're forced to eat, uh, avoid processed food. You're, vo you're forced to eat, you know, natural stuff more or less every time on every meal. Even if it's just one meal, you should make sure that it's nutritious and it has all the components that you want. So it would have a positive effect on your body from that aspect, from a health aspect. But um, mainly, I would say, just avoiding insulin spikes in your in your body. That itself is relief. And uh, no, it's known that the human body is a pharmacy by itself. It treats and cures Correct. itself. You know, yes. yeah. So you're giving time and room for your body to actually do its work. Mm -hmm. you know, and uh, there are uh, research and there are scientific uh, evidence showing that people who are in who are, who are diabetic, I think type two diabetes, have got into a ketogenic diet. And if you follow the doctor Stephen Finney that I mentioned, they've done actual research for 12 weeks with a certain number of people who are type 2 diabetes. And uh, majority of them, I think over 90% of them, stopped taking their medication by the end of that because they didn't mm -hmm. have any uh, uh, insulin spikes mm -hmm. in their in their systems. And as a result, they ended up using less of the artificial insulin they've been taking, the medication they've been taking. But of course, I would recommend that if you know you would uh, get in touch with your physician and doctor to look into this more further because it needs to be uh, that would be a bit more different a different program than what we're doing more or less. Yeah, like you mentioned, yeah. everybody is different and it needs customization. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Now, Abdulaziz, what would your day look like? You told us about the breakfast and the bulletproof yeah. coffee. What would the lunch look like? And in between, do you have anything? Yeah. So uh, I. I I've recently, uh, so when I started this keto diet, so basically my, my morning starts with, uh, I start my morning very early in the morning. Um, and um, I have my coffee in the morning, uh, and then I go for a swim. Then after that, I go to the office, <laughs> and I have my breakfast there. Usually the breakfast is made either the night before, or uh, if I have time to make so it. So you, you take it with you? I take my food with me, yeah. Okay. So the omelette and the avocado? Yeah, more or less. Okay. Uh, or other substitutes, well, nuts and stuff like that. And then uh, I carry my uh, snacks, which is uh, macadamia nuts or uh, cashew nuts or, you know, some sort of nuts that I enjoy. Uh, but generally during my working day, I don't usually snack a lot because of meetings and work and back and forth and all that. So I wait either for lunch uh, and my lunch is usually... Uh, it varies, of course, but uh, as a staple right now, which is the cauliflower rice, that is, is yeah. But I have broccoli, for example, steamed broccoli with with uh, chicken or fish with uh, you know some salad, and the salad is with olive oil, mm -hmm. uh, but a bit extra olive oil in the, the normal amount. But uh, uh, yeah, that's more or less it. And you don't uh, during work time and being at the office, you don't really get to enjoy much of uh, you know the uh, uh, freebies. Yeah. I'll come back to you. We have a call. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How are you guys? Fine. Wonderful. How are you, Ahmed? I know you're closing down, you know, very soon. Yeah. Um, 
I just wanted to, to talk about, you know, something very quickly, which is the idea that there are a lot of studies nowadays talking about the negative side of keto diet system. So I just want to know what Abdulaziz, you know, thinks of these studies. Okay. Thank you, yeah. guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They are funded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yes. So, in any sort of diet or any, any sort of uh, food program, you have your pros and cons. Now, what I've noticed from these researches and I've noticed from the results that people are complaining about is that they were not done the correct way. One simple example, which I almost fell into, is that um, if you follow a ketogenic diet and your con- composition is 70% fat, 25% to 20% is protein, protein and the rest is carbs, you're, that's more because it's a high-fat, low-carb, moderate-protein diet. Yes. So initially what I started was when I noticed and I took time to get into a state of ketosis is I was consuming excessive amount of protein. Excessive amount of protein turns into sugar later on. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so and what happens was is it didn't really change much. Uh, I wasn't producing enough ketones at that point and I wasn't utilizing fat and all that. And then I stumbled upon a video and it talked about it and I did a bit of research and I realized, okay, it failed. Some people complain that it failed. It's because of the composition or the macros of their meals, you know. Um, but it's not failing like in a harmful mo- way. No, it's it, a, w- it won't harm you. No, you just don't get into a state of ketosis. Mm. Yeah. But the fact, the mere fact is that you're still going to spike your insulin level and, and, and as a result because of the excessive amount of proteins you know, that turned into sugar eventually. And protein doesn't burn like uh, fat or carbs. You know, uh, and you know that muscle consumes protein, right? So yes. at the beginning when I started, I wanted to sort of build more muscle. Uh, that was the idea while training and all that. And I realized that I'm taking my composition was about 50% high fat, 40% protein and 10% carbs or maybe 45% protein, which was uh, not working. Yeah. Okay. What, what about meat like, uh, you know, beef or mutton or lamb or hmm. ca- camel? Camel yeah. meat. Yeah. yeah. So that's fine. You, as, you, as long yeah. You can have it. Yeah, you can. But again, if your meat is lean, mm. then it's mainly protein. Okay. So that's why I associate my meat with Fat. fats from the meat so that it's part of the, you know, so I get to hit that. Again, it's it's a matter of getting used to once you're able to understand your macros and how your body reacts to it. Because I personally measure my ketone levels uh, on every, every week. I have the device and I test and I check my ketone levels. And now at this point, I sort of understand what will actually take me out of ketosis mm-hmm. and how much can I push my, you know, carb intake. So on a very heavy training day that I do, for example, which I train for maybe four hours or so, um, I can afford to consume even up to 100 grams of uh, carbs and the next day check my ketones level and I'm still within the state of ketosis. Okay. Which is, uh, fine. I mm-hmm. think we came to the end of our show. I would like to thank uh, Abdul Aziz bin Diab al Salam. Thank you very much. For the insight Had about it. the keto uh, diet. Yeah. And yeah. thank, thank you, you Muhammad as well and all our listeners. And hope to see you all tomorrow with another episode from Come Close. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa